Hey guys, this is episode 2 of the uh, .NET reverse engineering tutorials. Um, in this episode we will be covering some essential tools and a very basic crack me. So, the two main tools that I use are d for dot and dnspy. d for dot is pretty common if you're unfamiliar with it. It is a deobfuscator for just about all popular um just about for all popular obfuscators so if you look through you can see that it has not only generic uh support so like generic control flow generic string encryption invalid metadata etc you can go to his github and check it out uh it's open source supports babel code for it code veal Fuser, the old version, Smart Assembly, Reactor, etc., etc., etc. So I won't actually be using this in this tutorial, but just to give you an idea that this is out there, if you are unaware, it's very great, especially if you use the command line rather than simply dragging and dropping. So DNSpy is a .NET disassembler, editor, etc. So what we're going to do is load up this basic crack me. So, blah blah blah, type in a password. You didn't crack it. The actual password is squad. So, all you got to do is drag that on in there. And so, this is not obfuscated. Obfuscation scrambles up the code, makes it harder to read, harder to process, and harder to crack. That is where d dot comes into play, where you deobfuscate, descramble the code so that you can better read it and more easily reverse engineer. So if we go through and we click on the form one, we can see that there's not a whole lot of code here because this is just a basic example. But you can see here's your initial initialized component where all this stuff gets set. And the only button is we see this basic if check, if the text box equals squad, then success message else it goes to a false message. But for instance, let's say that this was a huge application. We didn't exactly know where to start. You can right click and go to entry point right here. Go to entry point. That will take you to the entry point of the application and we can see that it runs new form one. Click there and from there we can expand the form one and see that the only button here is this one. Obviously since this is a small application. So, what you want to do is right click the method and click edit method body. And here we see a decent sized list of instructions. So just a brief overview, here we have a NOP, no operation, LD null, which is just null, I didn't go over that. But the important ones are LDSTR squad, and we have a BR true S. And that's pretty much all we want to focus on right here. It's because it's this one if check, that's what we have to patch. So we could patch this multiple ways. We could simply go in and change the password to whatever we want. We could do nothing and just type in the password like we did before. Or we can reverse this if call here and let us type anything to bypass the authentication. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through here, and if you see, it pops up with all the instructions. And we're going to click and change it to brfalse.s, which is the opposite of what we have currently. If it were a brfalse, we change it to a brtrue. If it were a brfalse.s, we change it to a brtrue.s. So just stay consistent with what you do, it's just the opposite. So since it's a brtrue.s, we're going to change it to a brfalse, brfalse short. Click OK. And see, now we see if text box does not equal squad, so if it's anything other than that, it will process. And sometimes decompilers do this once you edit them, or if they've been obfuscated, the code looks a little screwed up, but it's essentially the same thing. This just goes here. So to save this newly edited module, you can file, save module, crack me, underscore patched, and there you go. You can also debug these applications. So in order to debug the 
uh, new application, we'd have to close it and redrag it back in. As I just found out, I cut that part out. So we can just go to the patched application that we just saved, run it, and basically if we put in anything here, it should validate. Correct. And see how that works is if we put in the actual password now, it'll say incorrect. So yeah, that's just a couple ways that you can patch a very simple if statement. Crack me. Um, I will probably create a tutorial on more, a more comprehensive tutorial for harder crack me's, especially ones with obfuscation. So hopefully that helped. Um, let me know what you guys think, or if you have any suggestions for these tutorials, let me know. Peace out.